Welcome to the National Archives and Records Administration, where you'll see the original charters to this country's independence and learn more about the history of the United States. Feel free to listen to this entire presentation of the National Archives before or after entering through the security entrance into the main lobby. You can pause and play at any time during the broadcast. The National Archives were created by a congressional statute in 1926 in an effort to preserve and safeguard records of all three branches of the federal government. It opened in 1934 and was designed by renowned architect John Russell Pope, who also designed the Jefferson Memorial and other historic Washington, D.C. memorials. Among its millions of artifacts are the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and one of the four surviving originals of the Magna Carta on loan from a private owner. Since the founding of this nation, the government policies and decisions have been documented, but for the first 150 years, there were no procedures or buildings to protect historically important records. During those years, many government officials were concerned about the loss of important documents due to neglect or fires which were common in those days. This reinforced the need for a National Archives building to store and safeguard the country's national documents, some dating as far back to 1775. After many years of planning, President Herbert Hoover laid the first cornerstone in 1933, and the archive began operating in 1935. However, the building reached capacity in the late 1960s, and many records were moved to off-site storage and regional archives. In 1993, a new archives building was completed in College Park, Maryland, to store the overflow of material collected. The National Archives building has three publicly accessible levels, with the main level being the most popular. There you'll find the Rotunda for the Charters of Freedom Room, which displays this nation's most important documents, the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Since 1952, these documents have been placed into hermetically sealed encasements filled with helium gas. Regular visual inspections of the documents have been a standard procedure. In 1995, inspectors noticed changes in the glass encasements and determined they were showing signs of deterioration. So in 2003, the charters were re-encased to ensure the preservation of these important documents. Upon entering the rotunda, visitors are allowed to walk from document to document with no particular order. The National Archives forbids flash photography, which can damage these important documents, so as a result, all filming, photographing, and videotaping by the public in the exhibition areas is strictly prohibited. Light fades the ink and destroys parchment and paper, so light levels in the rotunda are deliberately kept low. The murals along the curved walls of the rotunda were painted by Barry Faulkner in 1935. They are among the largest oil-on-canvas murals in the United States, measuring 14 feet by 25 feet. In one mural, John Hancock receives the final draft of the Declaration of Independence from Thomas Jefferson. In the other, James Madison presents the proposed Constitution of the United States to George Washington. On your screen is a chart that matches the identity of each dignitary depicted in both of these murals. Other areas of the National Archives building include the public vaults, which exhibits other historically important American documents, such as the Louisiana Purchase Treaty, bearing the signature of Napoleon Bonaparte, the Emancipation Proclamation, signed by President Abraham Lincoln, World War II documents such as German records and the Japanese surrender, and collections of photography and other historically and culturally significant American artifacts. While experiencing the National Archives building, be sure to visit the O'Brien Gallery. It has special themed exhibits displayed from archive records, presidential libraries, and other museums that change every few months. Also, visit the Boeing Learning Center, where you can obtain copies of exhibit documents, participate in hands-on instruction, and explore online resources. You can also visit the Archival Research Center to get in-person access to publicly available historical documents. 
Access to this area is free of charge and open to any persons over the age of 14. The research center is located through a separate entrance on Pennsylvania Avenue. We hope you enjoyed this presentation on the National Archives and Records Administration. Need directions to the next stop? Just go back to the map and select the directions link for that landmark.